The mirror modifier is used to mirror existing geometry along the center of a mesh. The most common way of using it is to model half of a mesh and use the mirror modifier to generate the other. This saves time so that you're not trying to model two sides of a mesh exactly the same and finding out later that you missed some spot when it had to be symmetrical. Another way of using the modifier is to bisect. This means to take a full mesh that we're not generating half of it, but rather we're going to copy half of it and replace the other half. So for instance, let's mirror this along the z-axis, but you'll quickly see that this causes issues. If we turn on x-ray mode, you can see that there's all kinds of, of geometry on the inside that's, that's mirroring across each other. What we can do to get rid of that is to select bisect on the same axis that we are mirroring. And in that way, we now have a mirrored object that replaces the geometry that existed. Now, of course, this is still a non-destructive workflow. So if you were to tab into edit mode, that old mesh still exists. If you were to apply the modifier, you would have what you see here in the end. In addition to just bisecting, you may have wanted the rounded side of this mesh to be mirrored. What we can do is select flip again on the same axis. Some options to be aware of while modeling an object using the mirror modifier are clipping and merge. Merge simply merges any vertices that overlap each other within this distance. If we were to go to our model here and turn off merge, you'll see that our subdivision surface modifier is not smoothing across here because there are vertices that are not merging together. So in most cases, merging is turned on so that both sides are connecting to each other once you uh, apply the modifier or add other modifiers that would need vertices to be connected. I mentioned clipping. This is used uh, when modeling the mesh while you have a mirror modifier turned on. Clipping simply means any vertices along the center of your mesh will not pass the center line. So without clipping turned on, you can see that I can move vertices or any geometry past that middle line or away from the middle line, uh, sometimes creating overlapping geometry or holes. Um, this can be something you want or don't want depending on what you're creating. But with clipping turned on, you can see that these now will not move away from the mirror plane. What this also means is that any geomet other geometry I move, not just what's on the center, uh, will not move past that. And that can cause problems if you're not aware of what's going on, uh, but it is also very useful if you need things to not cross that center line and not create overlapping geometry. The bisect distance dictates how far away from the center things must be to bisect. So the larger this number is, the more things toward the center will be negated during your bisect. Uh, you're still going to have this kind of um, center line of mirroring. Uh, however, you can get rid of that once you apply the modifier and just eliminate that. There are a few options under data which have to do with your UV layout when mirroring. U and V refer to X and Y on a 2D plane. So keep that in mind when you're dealing with your UV data. This, your U and V is not to be confused with your 3D X and Y. U and V are your X and Y on your UV map, which may differ from the X and Y of your model. So if we take a look at this model, we have half of it modeled and a mirror on the X axis to generate the rest. You can change the X and Y offset of your UV map on the generated side of your mesh. You can also flip the UV on the X and Y or U and V of the generated side of the mesh. And one more thing that we did not cover that has to do with modeling is that you can use a different object rather than just the origin point of the object you're working with as the mirror reference point. For instance, I can add an empty and use that empty as the mirror point. Now with this empty referenced, we can move it around and that becomes the point at which the mirroring occurs. This may be more useful when you're not splitting an object up, but rather mirroring an entire object. 
So when mirroring the entire object, you're probably not generating half of your mesh, but in fact, moving the entire mesh along an axis, selecting your point of reference. And in that way, you can have two of the same object mirrored along an axis. And now you have mastered the mirror modifier. If this video has helped you in any way, please post your work somewhere and link it in the comments. If posting to Instagram or Facebook, make sure to tag BlenderForge. Thanks for watching, and as always, please like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. Until next time, I'm Carl with BlenderForge. Happy blending!